Hi everyone and good morning. Greetings from the Norfolk, Virginia area where today we're at the Virginia Zoo. This is um, another new zoo for us. I've never been to this one. Excited to go in and check it out and see all the animals. I go by the legend, jump by my wonderful girlfriend Molly. Let's go check out the Virginia Zoo. We have made it inside the zoo and there's a very big plaza area. It's one of these big uh, rolling ball fountains. This seems like a good place to start up the video, the African section of the zoo. Uh, and you're greeted with a big enclosure right off the bat, home to Hartman's Mountain Zebra and some of the big Ancoli cattle. That's, that's a cool animal right there. He is. And a zebra peacefully eating. The next exhibit has giraffes in it, including a little giraffe. And then behind the fence there, a cool hornbill. Not looking at us, but there you can see a cheetah. I do I like it's moving its tail around like that? Oh. Got a bug. Yep. Another view of these zoo's giraffes. There's at least four of them out. And yeah, that, that's definitely a littler one. Currently looking at two different enclosures for two different bongos. As my many rides on the Kilimanjaro safaris at Disney Animal Kingdom has told me, the bongos are known as the ghost of the forest. You can see how why it's called that as it kind of blends in. In with the bongo is also a Stanley Crane. Here you can see the giraffes. They're uh, they're currently having a snack, and the big ones have to go like over the fence, which is uh, kind of neat to watch. From this angle, you can see a second Stanley Crane which kind of looks like it's made a nest for itself. And it's sitting very peacefully. The guests do get to walk through the upper level of the giraffe barn. Now, obviously, all the giraffes are outside today with it being a pretty pleasant temperature. And a white rhino. And the white rhino barn as well. You can see some more of their feed up here. And here's the indoor area for the white rhinoceros. Uh, very reminiscent of something like a Jurassic Park. As you can see, it's very industrial, very, very strong steel everywhere. And here are the zoo's white rhinoceroses. They have a lot. It looks like they have at least four. This guy over here on his own. And then three of them having a snack. Hoping we can get a better view of those three. Uh, kudos to the people at the Virginia Zoo. They have signs like this around the zoo telling you not to feed the animals. And if you see guests feeding the animals, call a certain number, which I think that, that's, that's very good for the health of their animals. The rhinoceroses have moved closer. Very pretty animals, very large animals. Let's see one moving this way. Pretty good amount of room the, the rhinos have here as well. in the zoo's crash of rhinoceroses. That one is definitely on the smaller side, definitely far from a baby rhinoceros, but also not quite a full grown rhino either. And he's giving us the business end. And here's a better view of the small one heading this way. Yes, these two are enjoying some food. Get a little bit of the size comparison there as well. I believe the African section of the zoo is a big loop and you get different vantage points of the animals as you go around. So you'll see the, the giraffes from different angles. Right now we're looking at the Ancoli cattle from a different angle. We've made it to the king of the jungle, the African lion. And he's weak, or she? Yeah. He's weak. Very much in full Lion King mode, hanging out on the top of the rock. Very interesting design here. It's kind of like a big rock canyon section for the guests to walk through right by the lion enclosure. And if you look through some of the cracks in the rocks, 
you can see the animals. That's very cool design. One more view of the African lions. It's also fascinating. They're in different enclosures, but like the African lions and the mountain zebras, well, they could see each other. Also, it's also very interesting because you're at the same height as the lion mm -hmm. when they're on the mountain, which I, you don't get much. Mm -mm. Usually uh, they're up and you're below. In the canyon area, there's also some smaller enclosures, homes to uh, things like monitors and a really, really cool radiated tortoise. The radiated tortoise is on the move. Very slowly. He I assume the leaves are very slippery too. Mm -hmm. He yawned earlier and it was really awesome. Chilling out there is a white-throated monitor. Not the easiest to see with the fencing, but they do have a rock hyrax, which are fantastic little animals. He ran away. Well, I guess the Africa section doubles as the Canadian section because they're on the pathway in front of us, some baby Canadian geese. The zoo's got quite a few Aldebar tortoises, including one that looks like it's eating a leaf. Yep, that leaf is now gone. And it's nap time. It looks like they have at least four of them. And it's funny, you can tell like that one's a younger one. Yeah. Granted, these live for Forever. hundreds yeah. of years. So he's probably like 40, 50. Yeah. <laughs> he's the youngin' in the group. This guy is right up by the people. Hey, pal. Molly, when you mentioned these guys live for for forever, you were not kidding. On the sign here, lifespan's typical 65 to 100 years, but some have known been known to live past 200 years old. Yeah. The meerkats have come out, and they are uh, adorable little guys. Kind of an interesting enclosure for meerkats, a lot more grass than I'm used to at most zoos. And had to turn the camera back on because this guy's posing on top of Meerkat Mountain. This exhibit is the Trail of the Tiger. It's got quite the entrance. Laying down over there, having a snooze, is their Malayan tiger at the zoo? Christopher. His, his name is Christopher. I think the, the enclosure is pretty nice. Ah, there's a pool, lots of big rocks, and it's pretty good size. And the area that the guests can't really get close to. Yeah. We did come back later to see Christopher the tiger again. And uh, this time we got much luck here. He is awake. He is walking right towards us. We are behind glass, so. Oh, he is a. Uh... Oh gosh! Hi, Christopher. That scared the crap out of me. <laughs> <laughs> At the very top of the enclosure, making all that noise, a pair of white cheek gibbons. They do like noises. Yeah. They also share their enclosure with a couple of Asian small clawed otters. My uh, personal favorite otter species, but they are asleep at the moment. There's the otter. He's swimming around. They are so cute. They so really are. Beautiful. The zoo is home to a pretty cool orangutan exhibit. Unfortunately, none of them out on exhibit today. Really? But you know what? I do think you could see one a little bit through the glass over there. Yep. He just wants his birthday. Well, it's his birthday. Now, unfortunately, that's all the tail of the tiger area that we can show off. It was closed for a big refurbishment, and unfortunately, poor timing on our part, I think it reopens tomorrow. Uh, some of the animals in this area I did not get to show you. They have tapers, bears, uh, binturongs, and uh, yeah, a couple more. So I'm uh, bummed to miss those. But as a, uh, as a make good, the zoo cut admission prices all during our visit. It's only $11 to get in, which is very, very inexpensive. Time to enter the world of reptiles and friends. Let's see the king cobra, as well as the shedded skin of a king cobra. And then, oh. He's really pretty with the coloring. Yeah, the Fiji banded iguana. That one's real cool.
very vibrant. This entire enclosure, well, they're all really sleepy. I love the pancake tortoise head uh, just right in between the rocks. Perfect fit. It is really warm here in the world of reptiles. A little on the, the loud side. The frilled dragon is right at the edge of its enclosure. A couple of different box turtles. Hanging out right on the wall, that is the leaf-tailed gecko. No signage on this one, but it's it's very pretty. As you might expect, there's a lot of snakes in here as well. These are the Aruba Island rattlesnakes. There's a nursery area. Not the easiest to see, but it's a baby snake neck turtle. It's so tiny. In with the world of reptiles, there's also a small aquarium corner. Oh man, look at all the newts. Look at all the newts. There's also some really cool swimming frogs. A pair of fun lizards in this one. There's a basilisk. And then a sleeping, we have came in iguana. What I'm guessing is the largest resident here in the world of reptiles, the Siamese crocodile. <laughs> this fellow here is a very active sailfin dragon. Really, really cool coloring. <laughs> a little hard to get with the glare. This exhibit goes on for a while. You've got a crocodile mom there. And then there's no sign, I'm guessing a some sort of like reticulated python or boa constrictor. But it is uh, really Massive. big. Holy cow. Pretty neat pose there for the African bullfrog. You can weigh up to two pounds. Pretty good size Jamaican iguanas. I'm gonna wager a guess what I saw earlier was a reticulated python. That's pretty cool. You can see them working on the enclosure and building up the rock work. Look at the color here. That is a blue tree monitor. Definitely has the good name. Mm -hmm. Perfect name for himself. Hey Molly. Yes. I bet you can't guess what kind of tree monitor this one is. A green tree? Wow. Yep. He's a green tree monitor. When they named these tree monitors, they really look pretty simple. This one's the black tree monitor. On the map, this area is listed as an Australia walkabout. Uh, it looks like there is something in there. Oh, that is like a, um, that looks like a diker, not an Australian animal. It's looks definitely a diker. Still a very cool animal. A yellow back diker. I think so. Well, that was good timing. You did find some Australian animals in the back corner. There's an area where the emus are. There's a couple of them over here. You can see their emu house as well. If they ever wanted to expand the Virginia Zoo, they definitely could, as the zoo is home to a lot of just kind of like big empty fields or tree areas with no animals or anything. The zoo's home to an American bald eagle. I had no idea there's 48 different species of the eagle. And that's a lot. Yeah. This enclosure here is home to the zoo's bison. Not going to be able to get the best view of the bison though. In the front right section of the zoo, you do have the zoo farm area, along with I believe a reptile house. And under, having a relax down there is an African crested porcupine. They are so cute. Look at those little feet. Kind of hiding behind a stick, but trust me, it's cute. Not going to be the easiest to see because it's still inside its house. It's a Patagonian cabbie. Found in Argentina. Yeah, they're uh, they're large rodents. They're very neat. Wish it was outside. 
we have found the zoo farm section. And there's a cow, a miniature zebu cow. He doesn't want us to yawn. No, so we'll move on to the Cooney Cooney pigs. <laughs> They're so furry. <laughs> No. But he's making funny noises. We've got like we've got like a week left on this road trip. You live in the back seat. Where all the snacks are? Yeah, he would love it. Well a cool guinea fell. Over there is a northern tree tree. Oh, and he is quick. Very quick. Yeah, yeah, so they don't have, so if you can see it, sometimes you can see it, it is weird. So it's just a oh, bar. Oh, that house. is weird. Yes. Sheep have that, they have that, cows have that. A pair of resting sheep. Pretty nice area here for the southern crested screamers, which are these birds. Of course, you can't have a petting farm section of a zoo without goats. Look at the peacock, completely showing off the feathers. Yep, all fanned out. It's so big, it's like it comes onto the, the rope. That is awesome. This section of the zoo is the Animal Wellness Campus. And I'm guessing on different days, they'll do a show over here where they probably bring out some cool animals. Unfortunately, not today. There are no procedures happening today, but they do have all of their, kind of like their medical facilities out here on display with signs that would tell you what the patient and the procedure is. It also tells you what all these different machines are. Like that is the dental machine. That's the blood pressure machine. And then over here, there's another room with the small animal anesthesia machine. So um, it would be cool to see if uh, it does happen. I know I've seen these before, like Bush Gardens over in Tampa, and it's really neat. They also have what's called the enrichment playground, and all these toys are normally used for animals as enrichment devices. Or over here, I'm guessing little kids play with them on this hill. The zoo does have a, uh, a train ride, but it is not operating on the day of our visit. Hey, Molly, what time is it? Beer 30. Beer 30 indeed. Drinking a beer I've never heard of before from O'Connor. This is an El Guapo Agave IPA that's 7.5% labeled as handsome beer for handsome people. Uh, it was $8 and it tastes like a big old bowl of hops. It's very hoppy. And there we go. That'll do it for the Virginia Zoo. We were here for about two hours or so. And part of it was closed. Yep. I would say uh, my favorite section was definitely the African section. I thought that was really neat. I liked how you had like the big animal enclosures that you got multiple viewing points of, and I also liked some of these smaller enclosures. Yeah. Uh, Molly, did you have a favorite animal? Uh, the rhinos. For me, it was my buddy Christopher the tiger. Scare you. Giving me a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> but I had a good time. I would definitely like to come back and see the zoo when it's fully open. Um, the zoo is located kind of nearby, not too far from Busch Gardens Williamsburg, not too far from Virginia Beach. So if you're planning a trip to either of those, it might be a good place to stop. If you got any questions, let me know in the comment section below and thank you for watching.